In today's video, we're going to show you how to fix the number one issue that's going to come up with your N55, and that is replacing the oil filter housing gasket. And while we're there, we're adding a Musselman thermostat. Hey, this is Brian. Thanks for watching Keys Motorsports. If you like our videos, give us a thumbs up, make sure to subscribe, and check us out at keysmotorsports.com. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but if you have an N55, you will be replacing this. This is your oil filter housing gasket. I replaced mine at just 20,000 miles. John's is getting done at 45,000 miles, and that's kind of on the high side. So in today's video, we're gonna show you step-by-step -step how to change it. Now, before we get started with today's installation of a new oil filter housing gasket, let's talk about where it's located and the issues that it can cause. Now, for what I need to show you, I need to remove the engine cover, which you can see is covered by an aftermarket strut brace. So if you have a strut brace, you can remove that. And then we're going to remove the engine cover. Okay, so now that the strut brace is out of the way, you can just gently lift up on your engine cover. It's just held in with a couple little rubber grommets. So if we flip it over, you can see there's two over here. There's one up here and one down here. With this one, it often gets stuck right here. So if this happens, you can see it right there just pull it off and then press it in. And then once you go to reinstall, it's gonna make it a lot easier. Next, to give you the best view possible, we're just going to remove the intake. So if you haven't done so already, there's typically a hose clamp over here. Now this is an aftermarket one, I can use an eight mil, but you may need to just use a flathead screwdriver. So we're going to loosen that clamp here. There's a vacuum line over here. The way that this works, you're going to see there's ridges on the top and also the bottom. When you press those, it expands the clip on the opposite sides. So you can just very carefully do that. And then you have your mass airflow sensor. You just press down on this little tab, pull that off and set it to the side. Once you've done all that, there's a little grommet here. You can pull the end of your intake out. And then this is just secured with a couple of grommets. And you can see that there's a grommet location over here and over here. Now, unlike the engine cover, you wanna make sure that the grommet here and here stay in the car because these are actually going to press into them. All right, so if you look over here, this right here is actually where your oil filter housing gasket lies. And as you can start to see over here, it's kind of nasty from oil. And worse off, if you look under here, you can see all of the oil that has sprayed all on the motor and it is disgusting down there. Now the problem is that, as you know, the belt sits down here and you have oil in the cooling unit right here. So what happens is once that starts to leak, your oil will actually drip onto your belt and then that can lead to your belt slipping off of your pulley and then what happens is it gets sucked in through the crank seal and it can actually cause catastrophic motor failure. Fire, fire, it's after the fire. Now to prevent that belt from getting wrapped around that crank pulley and forcing its way through that crank seal, we did previously install a key seal guard on here. If you didn't see that video, we're gonna have it linked for you down below. But the seal guard isn't going to fix the leak, so we're still gonna have to take care of that issue. All right, so let me give you a high level overview of what we're going to be doing. So as you can see, it's, it's nice that it's in the front, but there's one little issue as we'll see in just a second. So there's a bolt that secures it right here. There's one underneath that we're gonna show you in a little bit. You're going to remove these oil lines over here, remove this coolant line over here. And if you look over here, this is where BMW went wrong. They thought it was a good idea to put the intake manifold over the last bolt you need to get to. So we are going to need to just pull this off, shimmy it out of the way, and then we're gonna have access to that bolt. So in today's video, not only are we going to show you how to replace that oil filter housing gasket, how to get the intake manifold, everything out of the way and get everything all set up, but we figured, you know what? While we're here, the Musselman oil thermostat is a great upgrade. What it does is it helps your cooling system to kick in sooner, which keeps your engine temperatures about 68 degrees cooler. So, hey, you know what? While we're here, it makes sense to do it. So with that, let's get started. All right, at this point, we already have our intake removed. Take a clean towel and stick it in your inlet. You wanna make sure that you don't accidentally drop anything in there. Now, because this unit has oil and coolant flowing through it, I'm first going to drain 100% of the oil. Um, with the coolant, a lot of guys, what they'll do is they'll just undo this hose and get 
just enough coolant out that they need. What I don't like about that is a lot of times you're going to spill coolant everywhere from up top. So I'm going to release one of the lower hoses and get most of the coolant out. I'm not actually going to go to the water pump, which is the lowest point of the cooling system and get 100% of it because it's just not really necessary and it's going to add a lot of time and complexity and I know that you're not gonna to wanna to do that, so we're not gonna do that today. So with that, I'm gonna put the car up in the air. You don't need a lift to do this, but for video purposes, it makes it a lot easier for us. So let's put the car up and drain the oil and get rid of some coolant. Okay, so if you haven't changed your oil before, the oil plug is over here. Um, but to get to the coolant and to show you some other things, I do need to remove the belly pan here. It's held on by 6,000 of these eight millimeter screws. So at this time, remove all of the eight millimeter screws around the perimeter. Now, as I said before, if you want to get to the water pump, it's back here. There's a bunch of additional steps. Um, it's not 100% necessary for this job. What we're going to do, I'm gonna to have to just pop it up and then show you guys is there is a another hose that goes to your radiator and we are going to just remove that line. It's a lot easier to get to. Um, it's connected to the radiator. So what you do, if you can see where my pick tool is right there, there's a little C-clip. Basically what you do is you take a, a pick tool and you get it, you put it under, and then you release the clip just like this. It's not going to come all the way out. It's just going to stay partial out. Um, and then what we're going to do is I'm gonna get my bucket here so we don't make a huge mess. Um, and then I'm going to just very carefully pull that off and we're going to drain a good amount of the coolant that is in the system. And then what we're going to do is you're gonna push that clip in and then you slide it in and it's going to clip into place. That's always the best way to do it. And by having that clip already pressed in, once you actually clip it onto the radiator again, you're going to hear an audible click and know that it is solid. So with that, I'm going to pull that off and try not to get too soaked. Now I am going to try to use a little pry bar here. You don't need to but you're gonna have less coolant run down your arm if you use one. <laughs> I love how coolant never goes in the bucket. I know. <laughs> Come on. Now we didn't specifically address this earlier, but make sure that your car is cool because if that is hot coolant, you are going to get third degree burns and you're gonna spend the day in the hospital. So don't recommend that. All right, once you have drained your coolant, as you can see, we're down to a slow drip now. Uh, if you look over here, we have that clip. And as we said before, you're going to just snap it in just like that. And then you can reach it back up and clip that back on. And we are done in this section. So if you wanna put that belly pan back in, you know, obviously once all this dripping stops, you are more than welcome to. The other thing I wanna tell you is when clicking this on, if you look over here, there's a little groove on the top and bottom. You have to have everything lined up perfectly. There's a little notch. So with this, it's nice because it's pretty much just straight down. Um, so once you have that groove pretty much straight up, it's going to clip right on. Um, but otherwise what people do, where they go wrong with this, is they try to push it on, they get nervous because it's not going on, but the reason is because they're hitting that notch. There we go. So next what you're gonna do, you're going to remove the oil drain plug. Do not remove that one, that is your differential, or you're going to be getting a $45 diff fluid change. Um, so what we're gonna do, very carefully, break the seal, make sure you have something to catch your oil with. And again, make sure you're not doing it with the car too hot because you will get burned. Now, once your oil is done draining, you wanna take a new crush washer. It comes with pretty much all of the oil filters on the market. And then we're going to torque it down to 24.9 Newton meters. Okay, so now that we have all that done, 
there's a connection up here that needs to be removed. So what you're gonna do, you're just going to press down on the back there. It's going to lift that little tab and then that's gonna pull right off. We're just gonna put this over here and out of the way. Um, next, I wanna try to get as much oil out of this as possible. So I'm going to remove his, his oil filter and his cap. Okay, so with this specific cap, it's a 19, but normally you just use a regular oil cap remover tool. And if you have questions on what tools we're using for this install, we're gonna link everything down below. Be careful and have some, some towels laying around. They're gonna have a lot of oil, so I'm gonna go get rid of this, and then I'm gonna try to get some of this other oil out of the system. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna sop up some of this with some, some clean towels. Um, if you wanna use like a turkey baster, you can do that as well. Just don't use dirty towels because you don't want any excess junk in here. So now that that's pretty much out, I'm gonna just put some towels under here because we're going to disconnect this oil line and also this coolant line. Now this coolant line shouldn't have anything in it at all, but it's always possible you get a little a couple dribs and drabs there. So we're just gonna cover our alternator. You're not supposed to oil it. And then we could take a T30, and this is a bolt that we're going to be replacing. And when we pull this out, take a look for some O-rings. You wanna pull them out and replace them. Um, you never wanna mistakenly leave extra O-rings in, because if you have O-ring on top of O-ring, it's not gonna seal all that well. Okay, set that to the side. And then the way that this works, just carefully pull it down. Like I said, you are gonna get some oil. Um, the other thing I didn't mention is that we actually have a new belt. So if you are choosing to install a new belt, wait till you're done, just in case you spill any oil. Now I have microfiber towel on top of microfiber towel on top of sorbent towel, so <laughs> we should be fine. But just wanna give you that little disclaimer. Um, as you can see, the O-rings did not come out. So if I reach up here, there's one of the O-rings. And then over here, there is the other one. So again, make sure that you address these. All right, so then just like we did on the lower coolant line, you have this little C-clip. So just use a pick tool, pop it up just like that. And you can just very carefully just wiggle it off. Okay. And as you can see, there's just about no coolant. Make sure that you snap that back. Um, and while you're here, if you do have oil on it, it's a really good idea to use one of your clean towels and just wipe it down a little bit. Just get some of that grime off. So next, I'm gonna start with the bolt that's down there that holds it on. Um, something that's very interesting about how this all works is it actually uses three different bolt sizes. So be aware what size goes where when you're actually doing this. So. Um, as far as, you know, what size is this bolt, what I've found is for this one, especially if you have an eight uh, millimeter open-ended wrench, one of these ratchet ones, which is really nice, um, that's gonna work perfect. If you wanna use an e-torque set, you're more than welcome to, um, but this is gonna be the easiest way to get this. Okay, so what we're gonna do now, I'm gonna get that pretty loose. Um, this is a, a pretty short bolt. Uh, once I loosen this other bolt up top, which I will start doing now, and then also the bolt under there, you're gonna be able to get that out. Um, if you wanna remove this other coolant hose, you are more than welcome to. Just make sure that you have all the available seals for it. Okay, again with my eight mil, I'm gonna loosen this up here. And this one you'll be able to take completely out. It's gonna look like that. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write a T on top of here, just to indicate that it's the top bolt for when I go to reinstall them. Okay, so at this point, we are pretty much ready to move the intake manifold out of the way. Now, typically your charge pipe, which is located down here, 
Typically it has enough flex. Um, basically all I need to do is get to this bolt. So I literally just need to pop it up and shimmy it over like two inches. So what we're gonna do is we're going to remove this insulation foam. Um, do not be surprised if it rips on you when you're trying to take it out. Okay, so we're just gonna pull this over like so. bend it out and just put it over there. And then you're going to need an 11 mil socket and you're going to see a series of nuts. There's two bolts, there's a bolt here, a bolt there, and then the rest are nuts. Um, you may see some other guides that say you need to completely disassemble everything up here, all the bracing, it's not true. Um, even if you need to remove this, you don't really have to. Is it in the way? Yeah, a little bit, but it's not that bad. So at this time, I'm going to loosen all of these nuts and bolts. All right, once you've done that, I am going to unclip the O2 sensors on the other side. So it's gonna give me a little bit more space to work. Pull this out. that up here and if you have some kind of chalk marker these are nice because it's not actual paint it just wipes right back off um, you can mark one so that you know what goes where so for these you just pop the clip out and then you push down and then the whole thing will slide and pop off just like that so again just pop it out use that as a little button pop it off and move it out of the way okay so now what we're gonna do we're just going to slide this off now I do have enough play but I do want to pop that charge pipe off it only takes a second to pop it off and, and put it back on so just take a, a pick tool or a screwdriver slide that c-clip off and we're just gonna push that down just like that so we get enough clearance and then we can just take this intake manifold and we can just wiggle it out of the way. All right, so at this point, we gave ourselves enough room to where we could get to that bolt, but it's not gonna help you because you're not gonna really be able to see it all that great. So I'm just going to release the top clamp on this charge pipe to get it a little bit more out of the way so we can be a little bit more camera friendly. We should be able to get a little bit more clearance here. There we go. And then you can see we've got much better access. And that's gonna help you guys see what's going on. And also, once, whenever you're doing this, you should really replace the little gaskets that sit behind here. Um, I'll show you that in just a minute. Um, but it's going to make your life a lot easier um, if you can get it far enough away, especially if you are planning on replacing them. Okay, so now that you have access, take an E10 and carefully remove the last bolt. Okay, and then this is the bolt on the right. So typically the longest bolt, show that here. This one right here is the top. The one to the right is a little bit shorter and then the one to the left is the shortest. So I'm just gonna grab more towels And then I'm going to separate that and just very carefully twist this out. Okay, just like that. And there you go. All right, so now what you want to do is use some parts cleaner. And I've already cleaned this pretty much as good as it's going to get um, in a new microfiber towel. And just get this as clean as you can if you have any rubber residue. Just make sure that you get it off. Just make sure you don't get anything in any of those holes. And then what we're gonna do, we're gonna go over to the table and we're going to clean everything else up. So let's head over there now. So you can see under here, especially super gross.
Okay, then once you have it as clean as you want it, again, we're going to be replacing the front section. We're gonna flip it over and we're going to carefully remove the old leaky gasket with a pick tool. Now mine, probably gonna jinx it, but mine's coming out pretty good. A lot of times what'll happen is they'll break in pieces. If that happens, you need to take a pick tool in there and get it out, but I wanna make sure we get everything out of here. Okay, so at this point, if you are not doing a Muscleman thermostat, you can put your gasket in. We're gonna get to that in just one second, but we still have one more part that we're gonna do. So I'm going to remove these bolts. It's an E12. With the Muscleman, there is an option where you can add titanium bolts. So we did that option because, well, you need to replace them and these look amazing. So we're gonna go with that instead. So then, pull that apart. These gaskets tend to get a little bit stuck. And before we go forward, check that out. Side by side comparison. Unbelievable, not only does it work better, but it looks better. All right. So over here, we have yet another gasket we need to remove. Now with this kit that we have on our site, and again, everything's gonna be linked below, um, you can either get without gaskets if you wanna go to BMW, or if maybe there's a gasket supplier that you prefer. Oh, so you, you can see this one's starting to break a little bit. Um, or there is an option, option where you can add a gasket. It just comes as a complete kit. So once you have this all cleaned up, we're going to take this cooler gasket, make sure that everything is sitting in that groove nice after you cleaned it really well. Then you're gonna take your cooler it's going to go on top. Um, you'll notice that there's this little peg right here. This peg is going to go in this hole and it's going to help line things up. Then we're going to reinstall our new titanium hardware. And all three of these are the exact same size. Okay, so once these are all hand tight, we are going to torque them to 16 Newton meters. So what I like to do is just snug one up, snug the next one, and then just torque them like that. You don't wanna just hammer down one and then go to the other. So even if they're not fully tightened yet, which these are not, it's always good to do everything as even as possible. Now that everything else is clean, we are going to take our new oil filter housing gasket. It's kind of hard to say fast. And we're gonna just route it in here. Okay, we are ready to reinstall it. All right, last thing we're gonna do before we bring the cooler over and put it on is we want to replace all of our intake manifold gaskets. Okay. So all of these, we have six new ones we're gonna throw on. So I'm just gonna remove these, reinstall the new ones, and then we'll show you how to install the cooler. All right, we are ready for our oil filter housing. Gaskets installed. We just need our bolts. Remember, the long one is the one in the middle. The short one, if you're looking at it from the driver's side in the US, left is the short one, and then the one that's impossible to get to without taking the intake manifold off is the middle one. So with that, let's go throw it on. All right, so I'm going to 
take the long bolt, start to thread it here. Then I'm going to take the short one. I'm gonna pop that in the back. Start to get that threaded. And you're gonna take the medium length one. So make sure you get all of these as even as possible. Then you can torque these down evenly again to 22 newton meters. Now, if you choose not to remove this other coolant line, um, you are gonna have to make a, a custom socket so we had to grind one down and then we were able to get it in there torque it down but um a little custom fab so don't recommend going that road if you just take those out um, just make sure that you get the o-ring that goes in there and you will be good um, now that everything is torqued down we can reinstall the intake manifold and then once you go to fasten this back on we're going to talk about the torque spec and whatnot in just one second um, it's always advised to get new nuts and also bolts for this so with that, I'm just gonna slide it on. Okay, perfect. Okay, so now what we're going to do, make sure that your charge pipe is pretty much where it needs to be. We're going to install new intake manifold bolts and nuts. All right, so now we're gonna torque them all down 15 newton meters. All right, so as you may remember, I loosened the clamp on the charge pipe to get a little more access to show you guys what was going on. So I'm just gonna tighten that back down. And then you can slide your clamp back on. Okay, take your O2 sensors, plug them in. Um, make sure that that little piece is snapped in if it's not already. Okay, clip them in, snap them. And then if you wanna wipe off your chalk, you can do so. Um, otherwise, it'll just rub off. And just take your wires, push them back into these little clips. I have this wire that needs to go and get plugged in right there. Okay, so we can get rid of some of these rags that we have in here. Um, and like I said before, because there was an oil leak, we are going to replace this belt here. Um, what I always recommend doing is taking a picture. So just take a picture and that'll show you where it goes. Or what you can do is you can express your utmost creativity by drawing how the belt goes. So it goes like that, goes like that goes around, boom, looks like an alien foot. Okay, next you're going to need a T60. That is going to go in here. We need to detension the tensioner. So let's find how it goes. And then I have this Allen key. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna compress it enough to where I can knock it into place. So let's see if I can do this while holding the light. Okay, pop it like that, boom. Then you'll be able to take that out. And then I always try to take it off of this pulley first because there's no lip or anything on it. If you try to take this one off, you have to overcome that lip and it's just kind of a pain. So just take it, slide it off like so. And again, while you're here, you know, it's an inexpensive way to make sure that your belt's not gonna get chopped up or anything. Okay, so then, I do it opposite that I just did it while holding the light. Get it fully on the back. That just kind of popped into place and now I have a lot more leverage. Um, so as you remember, the ribs go like that into those grooves and then this kind of gets folded Sorry, I'll show you what I'm doing here in a second. This gets folded in like this and then slides on. 
um, and then just take your hand, make sure that everything is lined up. Make sure that these are in the grooves. Make sure you check the, the side and also the bottom. Everything looks good there. And you can take your T60 again, compress it ever so slightly. down like that pull that out okay so now we're gonna take our oil lines here and be careful because they do have oil please don't get oil on your new belt <laughs> um, we're just gonna slide these on like so and then have your new bolt ready these are just gonna go up like this Make sure that it actually pops into place. Otherwise, it's not fully installed. And then you're gonna to torque this at eight Newton meters. Then you're gonna take this 10 mil from earlier that we removed. You need to reinstall it. You might need to move the bracket around a little bit. And I'm just gonna snug this up. Okay, then you have your coolant line. Um, this one also has a little groove right there. And there's a little notch on there, so make sure you line it up or it's not gonna work. Okay, everything snapped on. We are good to go. Now, you have to keep in mind at this point that your oil system is very dry. Some people have done this process. It's more common on the, the E-Series N55 and some older N54s where they start the car up for the first time, obviously after adding oil. Um, and it seizes the motor because it's just completely dry. So what we're going to do is first, um, before we started this video, we pulled, um, we pulled fuse 165 in the rear and we ran the car until it just wouldn't run anymore. So 165 is your low pressure fuel pump. Um, that way, when you go to start the car, it just starts it, but it actually won't turn over because there's no fuel. And what that does is that will get your oil flow going. So we're gonna do that for a little while and then we're gonna put 165 back in. But we have a, a little ways to go. We still have to add oil, we still have to add coolant. Um, that being said, um, what, what's a good idea to do here is before you actually put your filter in, pour some oil in here. And what that's going to do is it's going to get it right to the pump so that it's going to have, um, you know, the, the best chance of getting the most oil through the system. Um, so that way we're gonna, like I said, once we get everything buttoned up, we're gonna prime the system by just trying to start it. There's gonna be no fuel. Um, some people like to disconnect their spark plugs. It's easier to just pull fuse number 165. Um, and we'll show you where that is in a little bit. But um, yeah, so we are just about done. I'm gonna install um, the intake. And then from there, we can add some oil. We're gonna bleed the coolant system. I'm going to use a vacuum bleeder. Um, we're gonna have, again, links to all the products and tools we use in today's video down in the description. But if you don't have one, don't worry because there is an internal way that BMW builds into the car to bleed the system. And I'm gonna list all of those steps for you down in the description. It does take about 15 minutes or so, 12 to 15 minutes to run through one process, where if you use a vacuum bleeder, it takes like three minutes. So. Um, don't be surprised if you have to run and bleed it three or four times. So it could take you 15 minutes. It could take you 45 minutes with a vacuum bleeder. It's like, if it takes you five minutes, it took you a long time. Um, so it's, it's definitely a lot faster, but the BMW process that's built into the car, that'll work too. Um, if you are going to pour some oil in here, just so you know, it goes really slow. So you might pour it in don't be like, oh man, he told me to pour it in there and it's not even going anywhere. It just takes a little while. All right, so what we're gonna do now is we are going to replace the little O-ring and then the large O-ring. When you do this one, you wanna make sure that it goes into this groove right here. And then torque it down to 24.9 Newton meters. Then you can install your intake. Now that the engine cover's back on, everything else is installed. We need the strut brace, we need to 
try to start the car a couple times, get everything moving, get that oil flowing, put the fuse back in, and then really just set the oil light, and then we're pretty much good. All right, welcome to prime time, where we're going to prime the oil um, through the system just by cranking it where it's not actually gonna start. Again, we prep this before it won't start. <laughs> oh, it started that time. All right, so now I'm gonna plug in 165. It's the second one up. So I'll kind of put that in, just let you see it for a second. Um, so on the far side, the second one from the rear. Um, and there's this little card in the back if you have any questions on which one it is. Um, we also have a downloadable file of that, actually. And we'll uh, put a link down in the description for you. All right, so let's try this again. Now it might take a second for the system to, um, to charge up with fuel. There we go. It has an exhaust rattle, but otherwise. We'll just let it idle for a minute here. Okay, so then to reset your oil light, put it in accessory mode. You're gonna clear out any of those little errors that pop up. You're gonna press and hold. Keep holding, keep holding. Okay. Um, now it looks like he just did his engine oil. So it says reset impossible because otherwise it would just set it back to that 10,000 mile marker. Um, but if it was possible, you just press and hold and then press and hold again, and then you are good. But because that's already done and the reset is not possible, we're done. And that is the process on how to change your oil filter housing gasket and add this incredible looking Musselman thermostat. So once again, for any of the tools or parts that we use in today's video, be sure to see the links below. Once again, my name is Brian, that's Zach behind the camera. Thanks for watching Keys Motorsports. If you like our videos, give us that thumbs up, make sure to subscribe and check us out at keysmotorsports.com. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.